the Washington football team, I still call them the Washington football team. That's more fun than the, than the commanders, and uh, they're not good. They're not good at football. Uh, defensively, they've been an absolute mess. They got destroyed by the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving uh, to the point where, I mean, Dallas was planning out their celebrations, putting a turkey in the, uh, you know, Salvation Army Bowl. I mean, this was this was a disaster. A lot of uh, you know, Washington fans want uh, the coach, Ron Rivera, fired. Thought like maybe that was the opportunity to fire him. Uh, but still there, I want to talk about what went wrong with this defense. Is it time to fire Ron Rivera as this defense currently statistically, EPA-wise, the worst in football, worse than Arizona's. You know, Denver had a 70-point uh, game against them, and Washington has still graded worse over the course of the season. Let's talk about what's going wrong, starting off with this play. You know, some of it is just like, because I want to talk about coaching versus personnel, because that's kind of an interesting thing. Of How much of it is just, you know, guys aren't winning, and how much of it is you know, coaching. And sometimes it's like, I don't know exactly who to put the blame on. So this play, it's going to be a zone coverage play. And you see how this route can work, right? Can get kind of underneath this uh, zone coverage area. Hopefully the corner on this play, uh, Benjamin St. Juice, hopefully he is able to come in and make a play on Michael Gallup. That's what you want to see have happen if you're a Washington fan. Right when this play begins, I mean, this is where you could argue that maybe there's some coaching, you know, at fault is you see how far off St. Juice is playing on Michael Gallup. Again, Michael Gallup, I like as a receiver. He's not CeeDee Lamb, though. Like, you do have to, at a certain point, be able to have a corner who can at least play him somewhat tight here. But Prescott's able to throw this underneath, and there's just easy separation. On one hand, that's kind of, okay, St. Juice just, just lost to Gallup. I do wonder if you let, you know, let him kind of come in and play a little bit more aggressive or told him to play a little bit more aggressive. Does he find a way to play a little bit more aggressive? I don't know. He is one of those corners where, like, you know, people always sort of make fun of me sometimes for harping on this so much, but he, you know, did not run a very fast 40 time. He's not a fast corner, and when you're not fast, this is the dilemma it puts you in where you feel like you can't get burned deep, and because of that, you give up a ton of yards underneath, and there's really not a great answer there. Because, like, you also have something like this where, so what's going to happen on this play is it's going to be a zone coverage play. It's quarters coverage that the Cowboys are, are going up against that the Washington Commanders are in. You see you have a receiver running a, a deep route. It's St. Juice, again, going to be the player who is on that side of the field. This time it is C.D. Lamb, and there is safety help. But again, it's quarters coverage. It's not like the safety is always going to be going over there and defending that player, right? Like, he, you know, he has to cover his area of the field. Watch as when you see a Prescott takes a snap and he's going to throw down the field. You see St. Juice just, you know, I mean, Lamb is just blown by him, which again, part of that might be the speed thing, but also part of it might be the, he's hoping he has help down the field, but you shouldn't have help down the field. The safeties are covering the over the middle route. It, you know, for St. Juice, you kind of do have to stay deep here, but he doesn't really have the speed to do it and kind of didn't uh, maybe give the attention he should have given for a play like this. Prescott's throw is overthrown, so, you know, lucky there by St. Juice, got a break, but I mean, that, that should have been a big touchdown, so that's certainly a mistake by Washington. Also, a play like this just drives me crazy. I know it's not the biggest deal in the world, but these things do, you have to wonder how much of this is coaching, you know, again, it happens, every team does this, but it's still, when your coaching already isn't going well, then it really kind of sticks out at you, where it's just second down and 25, second down and 25, you're in a dream scenario here against the Dallas Cowboys, whose offense, this drive has looked really good so far, but then they, you know, had a couple penalties, which got them to this point. However, right here, before the ball is snapped, you notice uh, interior defensive lineman jumps off sides, and that just can't happen, because on a second and 25, kind of the great scenario is you're forcing them to have to make two difficult plays, but now you get a free play if you're Dallas. Dallas doesn't have to worry about, you know, turning the ball over because they can, and it can try to get a chunk play right here. I mean, this is a, a dream scenario for the Cowboys. Prescott takes a snap, and to be honest, I don't know how much uh, that mattered. I don't know if, like, you know, I mean, got a receiver open pretty good there, so maybe it would have been a catch regardless, but it's the principle, right? It's the fact that you gave a free play when you were in a favorable position that you just don't want to see have happen. Also, heading over to this play, so this is going to be a, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, but there's a safety deep, so really, it's it's a double team on Cooks. I, I would just describe this as a straight-up double team, uh, you know, just given the concept and how it's going to go. So, okay, you're double teaming Dallas's third best receiver, maybe, maybe he's their second best wide receiver, I don't know, but like, not, Brandon Cooks, at this point in his career, is not the guy that you're 
you know, uh, that's keeping you awake at night. I'm not saying he hasn't had his moments this year. He has. He actually looked really good these past couple of weeks. But still, he's someone you have to be able to cover when you're double teaming. He just is. Watch how when this play begins. I don't really know what the safety is doing here, why he's so convinced this route is going to go towards the bottom of the screen. Because you see him, his hips are already turned in that direction, and it's only going to get worse. Watch as Cook's kind of fakes in that direction, then peels back a little bit. And I mean, now it's just, it's wide open. Cook's is already open and there's nobody on the top half of the screen at this point. No, literally nobody. There's no one, uh, you know, in a, like, I don't know, a on a quarter of the field, which is where Cook's is running towards. Brandon Cook's uh, is going to get wide open and make this catch right here. Again, do you blame coaching or do you blame personnel? It's one of those, I don't know, because on one hand, that feels like a little bit undisciplined, make playing too aggressive on that route. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, well, you still had two guys on him, and Cooks was able to easily elude the guy who, who was playing man against him and juke out the safety as well. It could just be a personnel thing as well, and it probably is both, right? It's probably they need to get you know more talented defensive backs out there, but also they could use a you know maybe use a coach that can potentially fix some of these issues as well. Because like something like this is just to me a perfect example of like you look at this and just wonder like what are we doing here? Where it's man coverage, a third down and one, and you know for what it's worth. A 13-point game with 10 minutes left. If you can get them to a field goal, it's still a two-score game. Who knows? Get one good drive going, and now you're in a one-score game. It's not likely, but, you know, you play to win the game, right? So go out and see what you can do. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking here. Where, okay, so if you're playing man coverage, which that was a critique I had. Why are you, you know, your corners aren't great. Why are you playing so much man? Make things easier on them. I know zone hasn't been good either, the, at the end of the day, only so much you can do, so much you can hide. But in this situation, you have Jartavius Martin, who is covering CeeDee Lamb one-on-one. -on -one, which, like, see, Jartavius Martin, you know, has uh, 101 snaps on the season. And that's including the game against uh, Dallas. He was, uh, you know, a second-round pick this season. So, like, it's not like they didn't think he could do anything. Like, he is someone who they believe in to some degree. Uh, at the same time, though... This is a tough spot to put a rookie in who has barely played this season. He has only around like 50 snaps entering to the, you know this game. So like I don't know why this he's your guy here. I get you don't have a lot of options, but you're kind of setting yourself up for failure a little bit. Watch as when Prescott takes the snap, you're gonna see that CeeDee Lamb. I mean, again, CeeDee Lamb's a great receiver. Like he should be, he should be getting double teamed. Like that should be a no-brainer, especially when the criticism of uh, you know, Dallas has kind of been their secondary receivers aren't that great. It's a lot of CD Lamb and then scheming the other guys open. Putting your not best corner on uh, C.D. Lamb in a pivotal spot just makes zero sense to me. I get that C.D. Lamb started to play in the slot. I don't care if he's, you know, when C.D. Lamb is in the slot, he is not a slot receiver. He is still your number one receiver. He's the guy you have to pay attention to. So, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Listen, they spent, uh, you know, their uh, first and a second round pick on corners this year with Martin and Forbes. Neither one have worked out. I still like Kendall Fuller. I think he's good. But, like, you know, Benjamin St. Juice, he's not a disaster, but he's not good. I like Cameron Curl as well, but as a whole, there's just there's so many issues in the secondary. And at the end of the day, if you have a leaky secondary, guys are going to be open and your defense is just not going to look good. It is what it is. It's kind of why I always talk about how, like, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your pass rush is because it was good earlier in the year, but it also doesn't help that you don't have any pass rushers anymore. So it's just a, it's a tough situation through and through. I'm not sure that a great defensive coordinator could fix this, but I'm also pretty sure they don't have a great defensive coordinator. I don't know. And I know Ron Rivera is the head coach, not coordinator, but you know what I mean? Defensive minded a guy. At the end of the day, if you're an offensive minded coach whose defense thinks you can live with that a little bit. You know, if you're in a defensive minded coach and your defense stinks, then it's going to be a little tough. So should the Washington Commanders fire Ron Rivera? Yeah, probably. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.